Hello and welcome to Unworthy History. Today we got some actual history for you from this book right here, Indian Depredations in Texas by J.W. Wilbarger, published back in 1889. Now this story today takes place in Collin County. At the time, it was Fannin County, and it's about the attack on Clements and Whistler. In 1842, Dr. William E. Throckmorton settled in the territory of Fannin County, 25 miles from Fort English. This territory was afterwards made a county and called Collin. Many families settled around him, his place being the nucleus for the settlers to rendezvous for protection in case of an alarm of danger from the Indians. Mr. Wesley Clements and Mr. Whistler, with their families, moved from Timber Creek, eight miles north of Fort English, and settled some eight miles north of Dr. Throckmorton. Mr. Clements had a wife and two children, and Mr. Whistler a wife but no children. They found land to suit them for homes, went to work, and built themselves houses to live in, and commenced clearing land for a farm that they might make bread for their families. On starting to work one day after dinner, Indians who had concealed themselves in the brush nearby charged upon them when about 150 yards from the house, screaming and yelling like demons and cutting off their retreat to the house. They were shot down, tomahawks, scalped, and their bodies terribly mutilated. The wives of these two victims of Indian barbarity witnessed this entire scene. One of the women attempted to take a gun to her husband, but had to retreat to the house to save herself. The Indians then hiding in the brush again for the purpose of doing more mischief, the two women and children remained in the house until night when they repaired to the dead bodies of the murdered men. They did not know but that they themselves could feel the tomahawk and scalping knife, and that their little children could be roasted and eaten alive by the savage Indians. After drying their tears and quieting their sobs as best they could, they agreed that Mrs. Clements and her children should remain with the dead bodies during the night to keep them from being devoured by wolves and other beasts of prey, and that Mrs. Whistler should start for the nearest settlements eight miles off and give information of the murder. There being no road from their house, Mrs. Whistler followed the dry channel of a branch until she came to a road movers had made in moving to Dr. Throckmorton's neighborhood. She reached a house in safety and gave the alarm. The thoughts and feelings of Mrs. Clements that night have never been nor never can be described. Alone with her children in the night, watching over the dead bodies of her husband and Mr. Whistler. Every wolf that howled, panther that screamed, or owl that hooted in that dark and lonely wilderness, she imagined to be the Indians coming to murder her and her children. If possible, she would have wept tears of blood that night. After becoming exhausted, she fell asleep, but dreamed that the Indians were scalping her and her children, which aroused her to consciousness to weep and mourn. Mrs. Whistler, having accomplished her mission, the following day the dead were buried, and the women and children were taken care of. Wesley Clements was a brother of ex-Governor Throckmorton's stepmother, who is the mother-in-law of the Honorable L.C. Wilson, member of the legislature from this county, now living in the city of Bonham, Texas. So that's the end of this story here. This is actually the first one we've done from Collin County, which is up near the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So here, unfortunately, two uh, settlers died with their wives and children watching them, and there was basically no reprisal or anything that they could do. So if you want to hear more episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Unworthy History.